Let's get started on your notes over interval notation. Notation, the way we write things. Interval notation. I love interval notation. It is a different way of writing inequalities, and it's so much better, but I'm introducing you to it, and you just have to get used to it. So what is interval notation? Interval notation is another way to write an interval. An interval is the set of all numbers between two endpoints. The symbols, these brackets right here, this bracket and this bracket, are used to include endpoints in a set. And the symbols, these parentheses right here, are used to exclude endpoints in a set. So let me show you what I mean by that. So here you have um, some information where we've got an inequality written here. Let me see if I can highlight that. The description here, interval notation is here, and the graph is here. So when we look at this first one right here, we have a compound inequality where x is both, and I, I read these like this kind of backwards, x is both greater than or equal to negative 4, and x is less than 3. So in this description, the set of real numbers between negative 4 and 3, including negative 4, but not including 3. How do you know that? Well, if I see this is a greater than or equal to, so I'm including negative 4. This is just a less than, so I am excluding the number 3 when I describe this, this set or this interval. In interval notation, we're saying that x can be any number between negative 4 and 3. So we kind of write it where it looks like an ordered pair, but, and a lot of students really struggle with this at first because of that, but it's not. It's an interval. Negative 4 to 3, we're including negative 4, so I don't put a parenthesis here. I put a bracket, and we're excluding 3. So I put a parenthesis right here. So negative 4 to 3, how do I graph it on my number line? It looks like this. I have a closed dot at negative 4. I have an open dot at 3. X can be any number between those two points. So this just... Um, it just shows you the relationship between what the inequality looks like, the description, the interval notation, which is what's new, and the graph. So let's look at our next one. X is less than or equal to 1. Here's an inequality. It's just a simple inequality. It's not a compound inequality. The set of real numbers less than or equal to 1. This is what how I would describe this. It's the set of real numbers less than or equal to one. So when I think about a number line, I know, looking at zero, as I move to the right, numbers get bigger. They get infinitely bigger, all the way to infinity. Moving to the left, they get infinitely smaller, all the way to negative infinity. Okay, so when I write an interval where I've got these um, basically one endpoint, and then there's no endpoint. It just goes on to infinity or negative infinity. When you think about writing this interval, you're going to write it from left to right. I'm going to read my interval from left to right. So when I'm reading this, let me change this. When I'm reading it, it goes all the way from negative infinity to positive one, and I'm including this positive one. So how do I write that in interval notation? I write it from left to right. You have to be very careful because order matters when you're talking about an interval notation. So I'm going to start with negative 1 or negative infinity and I do a comma 1. I'm including 1. So I put a bracket here, but I'm going to use parentheses for negative infinity. Anytime I see negative infinity or infinity, I'm going to put parentheses because it is not a finite quantity. It's not a finite number. So I'm going to use parentheses for that. It's not a number. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. We've got a different situation here. X is greater than negative 3. The description is the set of real numbers greater than negative 3. So again, I've got my number line. I've got negative infinity here, 
This goes all the way to positive infinity. I've got an open dot at negative 3, and my um, inequality, my graph, goes all the way to infinity. Again, because I write my interval from left to right, I'm going to start at negative 3. Am I including negative 3 or excluding? I'm excluding the point, so I write negative 3, and I use a parentheses. Then, because it goes all the way to infinity, I do comma, positive infinity, and again, I use parentheses. So this is just a little bit of an intro. Let's put this into practice now. So hopefully you can see the colors here. Anytime I had a less than or equal to, I had a bracket right here. It won't let me highlight that. It won't let me highlight. I had a bracket because of that or equal to, and I had a closed dot. If I had a symbol that was like this, like a greater than, it wasn't greater than or equal to, I had parentheses and I had an open dot. So there's the relationship between these things. Let's practice with the interval notation. So we're given some different pieces of info information. Sometimes in some of these scenarios we'll be given the inequality, some will be given the graph, and some will be given the interval notation, and we just need to fill in what's missing. So in this first problem, we're given this compound inequality where x is between two endpoints. My endpoints are negative 5 and positive 4. Negative 5 and positive 4. And I know that because x is in the middle. When x is between two endpoints, your arrows, your inequality symbols, are going to be pointing to the left because it's going to be less than or equal to 4, but it's also, I'm going to read it backwards, x is greater than negative 5. Okay, I, I read those backwards. So we've got our two endpoints here, negative 5 and positive 4. Would I have an open dot or closed dot at negative 5? I would have an open dot. Open dot or closed dot at positive 4? Closed dot. What lets you know that? I know I have an open dot at negative 5 because this is just a, the symbol right here is less than. It's not or equal to. This line underneath, the fact that it's less than or equal to 4, that or equal to lets me know it's going to be a closed dot. So x is everything in between those two endpoints. So I can graph everything between those two endpoints. And then how do I write this in interval notation? I write it from left to right. So it's negative 5 to 4 is my interval. I'm not including negative 5, so parentheses or brackets. Parentheses, I am including 4, parentheses or brackets. Brackets. Let's move on to the next one. So in this case, I'm given this interval from 0 to 6. There's my interval. So I know I have an endpoint at 0 and another endpoint at 6. Would those be open dots or closed dots? Closed dots. I know they would be closed. I'm including those points because I've got brackets right here. They're not parentheses. Okay, those brackets or parentheses would let me know if I have an, um, an open dot or a closed dot. My interval is everything in between. So how would I write this as an inequality? Here's how I would do this. X is between two points. It's going to be less than or equal to the one on the right, and I read it backwards, greater than or equal to the one on the left. The one on the left is 0. The one on the right is 6. Let's move on to the next example. In this example, I'm given the graph, and I need to write the inequality and the interval and interval notation. So the inequality, what is that going to look like? Well, this goes all the way to negative infinity, and I've got an open dot at negative 2. So x is going to be less than negative 2. x can be any number less than negative 2. I just have one endpoint, and then it goes all the way to negative infinity. So how do I know it's less than? I have an open dot. If, it were less, if I had a closed dot, it would be less than or equal to. So in interval notation, again, I'm going to write it from left to right. So what do I start with? I start with negative infinity, and it goes all the way to negative 2. That's my endpoint. What do I always use when I've got negative infinity or infinity? Parentheses, and then it's excluding negative 2. Negative 2 is not a solution. Parentheses. Okay, let's move on to the next one. In this example, we're given the inequality. X is greater than or equal to 4. 
x is greater than or equal to 4. Okay, so what would I do? At 4, open dot or close dot? Close dot. 